So if you simply say that I can enable the auto scaling for the scalability job, it won't work. Let's say your seven spikes has doubled or tripled the uh, expector size. Like you expect size is thousand records, but you make it as like uh, like you got a certain specs with a two thousand or three thousand records. Your target should be identified. But so how we can achieve? See, you designed a job to process thousand records per seconds, and it is processing daily. And all of a sudden, you have seen a sp sudden spike, something like two hundred record or thirteen hundred record. So what will happen? What is the time that it is taken? So I'll tell you how this buffer time is going to help you. Hello. Hi guys, welcome to the channel. I hope everyone are doing great and also doing good. So today we can see one of the interesting question that we got it from one of our subscriber. So he is asking, uh, like first of all, thanks a lot for your videos on the Kafka and no other channel I found such a design level Kafka questions. Thank you, Andy. Thank you so much. So he is asking the question about how do you ensure the data consistency and scalability while processing the data in the Kafka. Okay, so data consistency. So the moment you say the data consistency, so mostly whenever a job fails during its processing, obviously we, uh, you know, it will arrive. It will. It, they have a chances that it will uh, fails with the partial writes to the targets or partial reads to the from the sources. So when you when you try to reprocess the data, obviously we'll try to reprocess the data. It might be a duplication of the work. So because of that, your target might cut corrupt. Or uh, your source files again will process. So this is an unnecessary headache, right? So to avoid that one, you have to design your pipeline. Your target should be important. What does it mean is, uh, like whenever you process the same record again, your target should consider it as a same record. It should not treat it as a new record. So how we can achieve is, let's suppose we can take any target is like a RDBMS database, and mostly in the RDBMS database we have a primary key. So whenever we try to insert the same data again with the same key, obviously it is going to update the same data again, right? So it do not contain any duplicate. Okay, so you understand. So in that way, you have to make your target uh, should support uh, to this item uh, item product. If it is not that, if it is not the RDBMS, if it is something like a file system or something else, how we can understand? Like from that, on top of the file system, you will build some. A table or some or some delta table or something that right. So while reading the data from the table, you have to avoid that duplicate. That is the one thing that your design should support. So as far as I know, most of the targets uh, like streaming job targets would be uh, DBMS database or delta lakes or maybe iceberg tables. These targets will support this uh, update scenarios. Just a small reminder, guys. I really keep so much time and energy to bring this quality content to you. I'm expecting only one thing from that is your life. Please give a like and share your opinion on the comment section. If you still have any doubts or anything related to this video, please add it in the comment section below. I can try to help you as soon as possible. And the next thing I can uh, recommend on the scalability side, right? So whenever uh, you see you designed a job to process thousand records per second. And it is processing daily. And all of a sudden, you have seen a sp sudden spike, something like 200 record or 1300 record. So what will happen? So when it try to process the 1200 or 1300 record with the same existing configuration with the Kafka, obviously your job is going to fail with the out of memory issue, or uh, maybe uh, the data will be sp spilled to the disk, or it might be slow. Okay. So usually, how how should we design? How should we uh, take the uh, you know, time frame of a, a streaming, a structured streaming job is uh, usually the Spark structured streaming job will work in the micro batch exhibition model. So for each micro job exhibition, you have to identify what is it, what is the time that it is taken. So to understand this one, you can go to the Spark logs and you can able to see what is the time it taken to process your num uh, input files, processing time and writing time. So on all together, even in the Spark UI, you can able to see how much time on an overall call for one micro batch job has taken. So Allah, you have to take your trigger time, uh, micro batch job execution time, plus you can add some 20 to 30% of the buffer time. Or you can go for 50% of the buffer time. So I'll tell you how this buffer time is going to help you. So during this spike scenario, you would have received some 1200 or 1300. So it will try to process the data instead of 1000, it will go for the, it will take the 1200 or 1300, it will try to process the data. Obviously it will 
uh, you know, it will finish it up like, you know, 1.2, 1.3 seconds. So ideally, it should complete in one second. But in this time, we have it has taken 1.2, 1.3 seconds. So it won't be any delay because you already all them buffer time. So the job has executed within a uh, defined time interval and it will go, go on good. If you take the other scenario, let's say your sudden spikes has doubled or tripled the uh, expected size. Like you expected size is 1000 records. But you make it as like uh, like you got a sudden spikes with a 2000 or 3000 records. So in that case, obviously your job is going to fail. You have to understand first thing is whether this is really a possible scenario. As per my experience, I never seen such a huge sudden spikes in the state. Instead 1200 to 1300, if it goes something like a 1500 or so, what should we do? So obviously we can have a choice to enable the auto scaling option. So you can add the auto scaling option to scale up the resources like a two to three or four nodes. Because even if you add more nodes, like if you can uh, give the auto scaling limits as like 50 to 100, 50 nodes to uh, 1000 nodes, it will take a lot of time. Even to the scale up or scale down, also uh, add some delay. You have to keep that in mind. So if you simply say that I can enable the auto scaling for the scalability job, it won't work really it won't work because even if, if you try to scale up the resources if you can keep it auto scalability as true if you are so input uh, size was something like a 3000 or 4000 record uh, the cluster with the auto default option it will scale to 100 nodes so to scale the 100 nodes itself it has taken some three four minutes so you have scheduled the micro batch job to run it in the seconds but it takes in a minute so obviously that will be a uh, delay and your job is going to screw up so you have to choose the auto scaling option with a defined uh, with a defined limits like you can scale up like 2 to 3 or 4 5 nodes that is okay but you should also consider the time how much time that it will take to scale up and scale down and that time also will be calculated as part of your micro batch up you need to uh, careful about that point let's take another scenario that uh, you have uh, you know your input size has doubled or tripled and uh, you uh, and how we are going to handle that scenario. So mostly I never seen that scenario in the production environment. You have to check it out with the interviewer that is it a, a real possible scenario. Let's take if it is a real possible scenario. Then what should we do? You can try to add an intermediary Kafka. Actual source we have a Kafka. And uh, we, we have a Spark. It will uh, read the data from the uh, source and we will process. So in between that you can add one Kafka. So that will actually maintain from it. Uh, so all the records will be in the Kafka. So there won't be any uh, loss of the data and no pressure in the Spark side as well. You will try to process only 100 records. But the, but the con of this approach is you can expect some delay. Okay, so outside they will directly push 5000 records and they expected to do process it in a minute or in a second or two seconds. But it will take some time because we are trying to process 1000 records at a time only. That is the one thing that we have to keep in mind in this approach. Uh, the second approach is, we have to find out how many messages that are still left in the Kafka to be processed. Okay, so we have to take that all messages and out of it, you will try to take how many messages that you can able to process to your job. That means, so whenever Kafka, uh, whenever the records, when, whenever you see the spikes in the Kafka, so you have to find it out. Like how can you find? On every micro batch job level in the code, you have to check how many messages that yet to be processed, need to be processed. So out of it, you will try to increase your batch size. Like you can support max batch size is something like a 1500 or, or uh, you know, 2000 with the auto scaling option. So with the auto scaling option, you can go a maximum like a 2000 or 2000 records so instead processing like thousand you can increase the basis like 2000 in the on the code and you try to process all the record at once so this way you can reduce your time limit a bit okay so this is how you can uh, manage with the large uh, uh, scaling options large data scaling options okay so as far as my experience i don't see this uh, kind of a uh, scenario but uh, mostly we can try to configure like how many records that we need to be processed and we'll check with the source team and all so accordingly we'll try to process if we see all of sudden uh, spikes or uh, something that uh, so th that needs to be handled in a different case we have to keep in one thing in mind we, we have to keep one thing in the mind 
if the source is getting uh, so much of spike and uh, it does or uh, you know we have to keep one thing in our mind so we have to stabilize the processing capacity of the system at same even when uh, when the messages are getting generated in the kafka while processing in the uh, spark and writing it to the target it should be the same it should be in sync if kafka is trying to generate more records and spark is processing less record this will also altogether can lead to a failure okay so we have to balance uh, kafka input uh, input generation and spark processing and spark writing so we have to balance all those things to make sure spark job would be in, uh, you know stabilized hope you got an answer please like the video and if you have any doubts please add it in the comment section and uh, if you have any other similar doubt you can uh, add it in the comment section or you can uh, mail me that you can find my mail in the bio section we'll again meet with uh, another video thank you guys